Hi, so yeah, I'm uh, Rob Foster. I'm a lecturer at the University of Queensland. I'm going to give you a slightly different sort of talk today. Um, it's about terminology. I'm an academic, sorry. Um, bits of it might be dry, but hopefully you'll find it interesting. And I think it is nice to sometimes go back to basics and think about what we're doing. Uh, so you might have seen images like this around. This is a very tall building that uses lots of timber. Uh, it's a conceptual design. So this is uh, something that Perkins and Will and Thornton Tomasetti in Chicago uh, worked on as a research project with the University of Cambridge. It's, uh, yeah, so to about 250 meters tall, that one. Taller still, uh, conceptual design for London, PLP architecture and Smith and Moorwork engineers, again with, uh, with Cambridge University. Uh, in the interest of full disclosure, that's where I used to work. That's where I got the images. This is 300 meters tall. And uh, use, it would use a very large amount of timber. Um, now, you might well say to me, OK, great, you can draw a picture of a very tall building. Um, what are we doing in real life with timber? Uh, well, in 2013, and I apologize to anybody if I get the completion dates marginally wrong, but this is about right, I think. Forte building, uh, 10 stories tall in Melbourne in timber. The Treya building in Norway, 14 stories tall, 2015, in timber again. We have the Tallwood House at Brock Commons, going up to 18 stories, we're at now 2017. It's got concrete cores, uh, but it certainly uses a lot of timber. And we've got, and I apologize if I slightly mispronounce this, uh, Mjostane, uh, it's uh, in Norway, um, I think it'll be completed around 2018, and they're building it at the moment. And that, again, uses a lot of timber. Uh, so this raises some questions, and might well, it raises lots of questions, but one of them, uh, what is the world's tallest timber building? And maybe more importantly, what will it be uh, going forward? And you'd think that would be a relatively easy question to answer, but at the moment, uh, we don't know, we can't say. There's no guidance on it. Or perhaps it would be truer to say, not that we can't say anything, but we can say whatever we want. So we can all claim our timber buildings are the tallest. There's nobody who's going to act as arbiter. Uh, so in this talk, I'm going to talk about the role of the CTBUH criteria in classifying tall buildings. I'm going to highlight some of the challenges to the existing criteria presented by uh, the sort of appearance of timber as a structural material in a tall building context. Obviously, we've been using it in lower rise buildings for a very long time indeed. Uh, I'm going to explain a, a proposal for the inclusion of, of timber in the terminology. And I'll just touch on uh, a pre-conference workshop we had on, on tall timber yesterday. So you're probably aware, uh, for most people, it's probably the thing CTBUH is most famous for, is they, uh, they classify, they measure, they define, uh, they tell us what the tallest building in the world is. And that applies to various types of building, not just uh, it's not just a single answer, I'd say. And the criteria at the moment address tallness in a number of ways. They talk about um, or, or measuring and defining buildings in a number of ways. They talk about tallness, height, material. They also talk about building function and the status of a building. Uh, I won't be touching on those, but the first three I will talk about. So tallness can be thought of in a number of ways. At the moment in the criteria, we talk about height relative to context, proportion, and the use of tall building technologies. Uh, so height relative to context, I think, makes a lot of sense. Uh, if you've got a 14-story building in a suburban neighborhood, it might appear quite tall. If you put it in downtown Chicago, it will look like a toy. Uh, similarly, proportion. If a building is very slender, it will feel tall. If a building is, is very large, if it takes up an entire city block, even if it's the same height, it's not going to have quite the same feel to it. Uh, so we can sort of think of relative height and slenderness, uh, the product of those as being kind of components of tallness. Uh, another aspect that the CTBUH criteria touches on, which I think is quite interesting, is the, uh, the use of tall building technologies, or technologies that are associated with the challenges of tall building design. So if we need really advanced lateral load resisting systems, if we need uh, really clever elevators, if we need damping technology to deal with, with slenderness for, for lateral vibrations, and things like that, we may be talking about a tall building. 
I'd, I'd add another couple of ways of thinking about tallness. We could talk about something being tall for a particular kind of building. This is tall for a Lego building. It's not tall in absolute terms, but it's tall for a Lego building. I would have been impressed as a child if someone had shown me that. And that's kind of where we are in a way with timber at the moment. We talk about tall timber, probably anything taller than about seven stories we would say as a tall timber building. But in the context of the other materials we're dealing with, um, that's not, not very tall at all. Uh, tallness can mean taller than local building regulations will allow. Um, this varies by jurisdiction. If you are in a, uh, in a city where the limit on timber buildings is, uh, is four storeys, particularly if you can go up to say four storeys with a prescriptive design approach, but you need some special approach after that, you could think of that as a, as a tall building perhaps. And this one isn't funny. Um, we can think of a tall building as being something that's taller than a firefighter's ladder, taller than can be fought uh, in a normal way from the ground, taller than fire could be fought in a normal way from the ground. And um, in a lot of jurisdictions, that's probably the basis for when a building is, is thought to be tall or not um, in terms of regulations. So the CTBUH also measure the actual height. So this tallness question is maybe a bit more subjective. Uh, the heights are a little bit more objective as long as you can agree on where you're measuring from and to, and there's some detailed guidance on that. I won't go into it too much. Uh, the thing that really interests me at the moment is uh, structural material. So it's type of building in a way. At the moment, we can talk about a building being a steel building. And that's defined, uh, so I've just taken this out of the, the criteria. The main vertical and lateral structural elements and the floor systems are constructed from steel with the very important caveat that a building of steel construction with a fourth floor system of concrete planks, concrete slab, crinkly tin, I imagine, um, that's still a steel structure because steel buildings don't have solid steel floors, obviously, so there wouldn't be any steel buildings. So we're already finding a little work around. Uh, we can have a concrete building where both the main vertical and lateral structural elements and the floor systems are constructed from concrete. That's relatively straightforward, I think. We can have a mixed structure building where we have steel over concrete or concrete over steel. Again, that's not too, uh, too much of a problem with that. That's a pretty recognizable type of building. And we can have a composite building or what sometimes people would call a hybrid building perhaps where we're using steel and concrete together as structural systems. And examples of this sort of building can include steel columns with floor systems of concrete beams, steel structure with concrete core, concrete encased steel columns, concrete filled steel tubes, etc., etc. Now what really jumps out at me as a person who's interested in, uh, in trying to use timber a bit more, um, we're saying a tall building can be steel, it can be concrete, it can be mixed, in the sense of being steel over concrete or concrete over steel, or it can be composite steel and concrete. Um, but I'd like to ask the question, I guess, is that really all a tall building can be? Uh, so CTBUH put together a list of, uh, sort of tall timber buildings in the world, uh, both uh, visions, the sort of conceptual designs down the bottom, and buildings that are, are kind of seriously proposed, some that are, are under construction, some that have already been built. Um, are we really saying that none of these are tall buildings? Perhaps. Are we really saying that if somebody is successful in building that 300 meter timber tower, that that's not a tall building? That seems ludicrous. Um, and I you know, wouldn't approve. Uh, so uh, made a, a proposal. So we were having a bit of a discussion in the kind of structural engineering community or in the university where I was working about this. And certainly lots of people have had opinions on it. Other people have talked about it. Uh, I'm not saying we're the first people to think of it by any stretch of the imagination. But nobody really seemed to have written anything down. Uh, so we, we did that initially and talked to CTB Rach about it. And they were um, interested in the proposal and asked us to, uh, to kind of put it down in writing in the, in the journal. Uh, which we, we have done and what we'd like to see um, 
is the uh, CTVUH Heightened Data Committee maybe take a look at this and maybe think about extending the, the definitions to include timber or, or other materials. It's not just about timber, it's more about it not just being steel and concrete in my mind. So if we're going to make rules um, or, or change the definitions, uh, how, how might we do that? Well, one of the principles uh, behind or that affected my thinking, I suppose, a uh, quote from the great uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes, um, a famous American jurist, who uh, said, hard cases make bad law. And I think he was, he was quite right. So there are always going to be exceptions. There's always the what about, oh, this building doesn't seem to quite fit. And if you try and write a set of rules that comprehensively deal with every little case, uh, you can quickly get very lost. Uh, whereas if you start with just some basic principles, um, uh, you can get a bit closer to something that works most of the time. And you can maybe leave it to the, to the heightened data committee to, to, uh, to sort out the, the, the really tricky ones. Um, so our proposal, it's relatively simple. It doesn't radically change uh, the existing guidance other than including timber or, or some other material. Uh, we're proposing that you could have a classification of a, of a single material tall building, one where the main vertical and lateral structural elements and the floor systems are constructed from a single material, such as uh, steel, concrete, timber. So a, a timber tall building would be, say, would be defined as one where the main vertical and lateral structural elements and floor systems are constructed from timber. I don't think that's too contentious. Uh, some harder cases will exist. So if we look at the Treyer building in Norway, it has some concrete slabs about uh, every fourth story. Uh, they're there to provide additional mass to the building. So they're ballast. They are concrete. In my mind, they could just as easily be gravel or water, something else that provides mass. The concrete doesn't really act as a primary load path. It's not a, a main component of the structural system. So is this a timber building? In my mind, it is. I'm not the ultimate authority, but that's, that's how I would interpret it. Um, so how about composite buildings? Uh, I would say a composite tall building utilizes a combination of materials acting compositely in the main structural elements, thus including an otherwise steel or, or timber building with a concrete core. That's likely to be quite a common typology. And I'd suggest we list materials um, in order of prevalence by mass. So if something's mostly timber with a bit of concrete, then it would be a timber concrete con composite. If it's mostly concrete and a bit of timber, it would be concrete timber. Uh, so we get some hard cases here. The Limnologen building in Sweden, as I understand it, it has full height vertical steel ties uh, as the main tension force path in this lateral stability system. Now, the building is, is overwhelmingly timber but it has this very critical force path made of steel, which is required to make it work. Is that a timber building? I would say no. To me, that's a timber steel composite. It's using two materials together to their best effect, certainly. Um, but I wouldn't say it was straightforwardly timber. Um, and a mixed structure tall building, uh, there's no radical change there. Just introduce the word the word timber in there. And I listed some of the, the more common forms you might actually find, steel uh, on top of concrete, timber on top of concrete, timber on top of concrete being very common, and um, concrete on top of steel. Uh, it does happen, the shard, something like that. And I discovered yesterday in the Tall Timber Working Group that there's a building in Australia, which if I recall correctly, is seven stories of concrete on top of seven stories of timber, which is a pretty mind-blowing um, idea. So that's mass timber in the old sense of very large pieces of timber, not the laminated kind of modern engineered products we're talking about now, but still pretty extraordinary. Um, and additionally, I think there's a couple more points we'd add. If a tall building of steel or timber construction with a floor system of concrete planks or slabs supported on steel or timber beams, it would be considered a steel or timber building. So if you're just using concrete slabs sitting on, on timber beams, in the same way that when you put a concrete slab on steel beams, you'd consider it a steel building, you'd consider the timber building a timber building. It's just consistent. And uh, if we have columns and walls of one material and a floor system using beams of different material, it would be a composite tall building. So again, we're not really changing anything.
So a hard case that sort of applies to all timber buildings. Uh, what about the connections? It would be very rare for you to have a true timber, timber, carpentered connection at kind of multi-story building scale. Uh, it's not impossible. Uh, there's, a, there's a wonderful building by Shigu Ban, the TA Media building. It's, um, I think, six stories tall. It's, I think it's just the vertical loads that are being carried by timber. I think it relies for stability on, on some concrete. But those are, are, are carpentered, very modern carpentered joints, and they're fantastic. Um, but I think it's unlikely that we'll, we'll see that um, in kind of really tall buildings. And most uh, timber buildings, even at much smaller scale, they use a bit of steel in the connections. Some of the designs for taller timber buildings use a bit of concrete. I think where it's used locally, um, I, I wouldn't say it changes the character of the building, that it changes the material of the building any more than if you use steel to connect precast concrete elements together. You don't suddenly call it a, a composite building. Uh, so if at all buildings of timber construction with local connections between timber elements formed using steel or another material, I would still consider it to be a timber building. Uh, so just to illustrate the proposal a little bit, so we'd have, say, a single material building made of timber, a mixed material building, timber on top of steel, a mixed material building, steel on top of concrete. There's no great changes. Similarly, uh, a composite building, so a concrete core, with timber uh, kind of vertical structure, um, would be a concrete timber composite, uh, timber steel, you get the idea. And um, where people sometimes talk about, oh, how tall is the timber building you, you put on top of a concrete uh, plinth or what have you, I would say you could kind of consider it a single material building above the support height, uh, which if you had a very tall timber building on top of um, another concrete building, maybe it would be useful to categorize it in that way. Um, what I would add is um, that if we've got these mixed structure buildings, if we've got more than about 85% of it being one material, in terms of, you know, you've got a couple of stories of concrete and you've got 10 stories of timber on top, um, well, you need slightly more than 10 stories on top, I suppose 12, 13. Um, then we'd still consider it to be a single material building. And the reason I pick that 85% number, in some ways it's quite arbitrary, but the existing criteria will define a, a building as being a single function if it's 85% that one function. So if you have an office building with a couple of stories of retail at kind of ground floor, um, you don't say it's a mixed, uh, a mixed building, it would just be considered to be um, a sort of an office building. And I'd say we could apply a similar rule to materials. We don't have to. Uh, so this proposal, if you're interested, it's in the uh, in the journal issue that you got given as part of the uh, the sort of the conference pack. So you can read it and make your own minds up. Uh, you feel free to provide any any feedback. Um, and I'll just briefly touch on the the pre-conference workshop that we had. Uh, so that was yesterday morning. We had presentations and discussions on a, on a whole range of topics uh, relating to tall timber. We had some, some really amazing case studies, uh, people talking about advances in structural technologies, sustainability, fire, constructability. Um, some of it got very detailed and very technical, and I certainly um, learned a lot. And I think we're going to take uh, some of that work forward uh, to producing a, a state-of-the-art guide for, for tall timber. Uh, once we can agree what tall timber is, um, on the on the topic of uh, of these definitions, uh, people put forward uh, various opinions, um, which I thought were were great. None of them particularly conflicted with what I've presented today. I think it's fair to say, which is good. But some of the the highlights for me, um, people agreed that there, there was a need for some clarity in terms of definitions, particularly in terms of communicating designs. Uh, to developers or clients, if you're telling them they're buying a timber building, it would be helpful if you if you really knew what that was. Um, somebody said that to, to be considered tall, uh, a building should be impressive, which um, I think would be a difficult one to actually write into the rules. It's a bit subjective, but I think that's uh, something we can probably all agree with. Uh, if a building hasn't been built, it doesn't count, uh, which really put me in my place with my conceptual designs. 
and uh, and uh, yeah, and some of the main vertical and lateral load resisting systems should be made of timber if we're going to call it a timber building, which I think goes along with what I was um, talking about. So I'd just like to acknowledge the input of my um, co-authors and collaborators on the on the original kind of definitions work. That's Tom Reynolds, uh, who's now at the University of Edinburgh, and Michael Ramage, uh, who's still in Cambridge, and the, the, you know, the funders of that work. And I'd particularly like to thank the, the CTBUH, Carsten Hein in particular, and, and Arup for hosting the pre-conference workshop on tall timber. And I should say that although I'm, I'm kind of nominally co-chair of that, uh, that workshop, Carsten did all the really heavy lifting, so thank you. And yeah, uh, thanks a lot. I think I'm a few minutes early, so that balances out.